Welcome to the Music for Transformation interview series where I get to interview amazing people who use music to enhance their own lives and that of other people as well. So first of all, just hit that subscribe button now and enjoy the interview. So joining me today is a good friend of mine, John Nicholson. Hi, John. Good afternoon, James. I'm absolutely thrilled that you are on, and I, I think people are going to be touched by your story and you as a human being, and I would just like to say that. I love your biography. I, I asked John if he could provide me with a short biography, and this is what he came up with. It's It's brilliant. Do you know what? I'm not even going to say it. I'm going to let you say it. It's a something survivor, because that will give away the story, won't it? A something survivor on a mission to transform lives. And you are and you're doing it. So, John, let's start off. Obviously, we're going to talk lots about music and how that has impacted your life. But share a bit of your story, please. Yeah, thank you, James. First of all, I just want to say it's a privilege to have met you because listening to your music really shows the power of music and it's a great to be on on this event with you i am a suicide survivor it, by all rights by all means i shouldn't be sitting here to you talk, talking to you right now it's only a quirk of fate god a guardian angel whatever you want to call it that's the only reason I'm sitting here today. I am a suicide survivor. And James, I want to say it's a privilege to know you, knowing what you've gone through, knowing that there are other people out there. And talking about this is so important. What you wrote about in your book when you co-wrote What Do You Do If Life Gives You Lemons, you make lemonade. Um, and then you've got the music. You've got your own lyrics, your own power. Um, I can't sing as you do. I'm not musical like you. But what I can do is I can give people the opportunity to fulfill their own opportunities, to become the person they're meant to be, to give them the tools to do that. And this all came about as a result of some dark times for me. Um, I know the date was the 7th of September 2014. I know it was a Sunday morning. In the run-up to that, I can't tell you much. What I know about that time, I've learned from the people around me, from their recollections, from their memories. I woke up that morning and I wrote a note to my wife and family. It was... I can't even remember what I wrote. I, I just can't remember. I do know that I went to the kitchen, I pulled out a very large carving knife. It was big. I rested it against one of the walls in the kitchen, rested the point onto my heart and started leaning in. It, just as it pierced the flesh, a door slammed upstairs. I was still leaning forward and I went, uh? Now, as you can see, that action pulled the knife away from the wall and I carried forward. I hit me head, bruised me head. Not that there's much up there to damage. Um, I landed on the floor in a heap, crying my eyes out. There's a little. I remember feeling the trickle of blood down me, me top, and I just didn't know what to do. I, I just cried my eyes out. I finished crying, cleaned the knife up, wiped my chest got dressed and proceeded to act as per normal as if the day was just another day. I knew I was ill, didn't know what to do about it. I went to work the very next day. I was talking to my boss and I collapsed with chest pains. Like in the city of London, they had all the police, all city of London police are cardiac and first aid trained. Someone was on scene in minutes. Um, and I was being checked over, followed up by an ambulance. And when I explained what had happened, 
I was immediately put on on leave. Um, it's it's a very dark place to be. It's something very difficult. It's something I can't explain. But I do know on the programs that I've watched, documentaries on suicide, talking to suicide survivors, the books I've read about suicide survivors, without exception, we are grateful to still be here alive and able to do what we do. So it is, in my mind, evidence that when you're in that dark place, you feel that there is only one way out. There isn't. And in my own case, I have become something better than I was. I've become something emotionally more improved than I was. I have become a channel in my mind for helping others who are unable to help themselves because with community driving school, we empower others through teaching them to drive in return for them working in the community. You empower others through your music, through your lyrics, through your raw emotion in, those, in that music. We empower others by giving them skills. And it, helping people through those mental health issues isn't a one size fits all. There are many different hats that you can wear and people at different times need different things. In my case, my family knew I was ill but didn't know what to do. I do know through a friend of mine who's now a director in CDS because essentially he saved my life. He spent three hours on the phone with me on the Friday before I tried to do it. I was at Guildhall telling him how I was going to drop in front of a train or drop off of a bridge or just end it. I remember I was at Guildhall and that conversation, Paul just said to me something which stuck with me for some reason. Can't remember much else about that time. But he said, John, if you killed yourself, I would rip the top off that coffin and drag your body out and give you a slap. Because we love you. Powerful stuff. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing your story. I imagine uh, for anyone watching this, if you're like me, you've got tears in your eyes. And I, I've pretty much heard it before, but it um, doesn't take the, the power away from it. Thank you, John, for your, your courage and vulnerability in sharing that because it, it helps other people. Um, by exactly. you actually You're doing very that. welcome, James, because I know you get it more than most people. You get it. You, you, you are an empowering person as well. And you empower people like me and encourage people like me to come forward. So, yeah, the, the respect is mutual, James. The respect is very much. Thank mutual. you. Thank you. Just a quick question for you as well. I mean, like I say, obviously we'll, we'll get on to, you know, talking about lots of mu music because we, uh, we both have a love of music. One of the things I find that, and, and I certainly haven't got the same story as you, but you know, as everybody out there has, you know, I face challenges and, you know, emotional traumas and things like that on, you know, various levels. I find that the more, courageous I can be and vulnerable I can be in sharing some of those experiences you know I'm a public speaker I find that the more I do that not only does it help other people but it also heals it for me as well is that the same for you that every time you sort of tell the story it's adding like a, another layer of healing to it in a way 100 percent, it is yeah 100 percent. yeah it's very cathartic to talk about it it is, I, I love your choice of how you, what you describe as your songs as empowerment and empowering them. It is empowering to talk about it mm -hmm. because you're saying to that, to that depression, to that, to that mood, to that instance, you're saying to it, you don't scare me. I'm going to talk about it. Mm -hmm. You don't, you, that little demon that wants me to end my life, I'm confronting you and telling you 
I'm telling others, so you've got the power over them. It is empowering. It really is. And the more I talk about it, I don't mind talking about it to anybody. I'm very open about it. I tell my pupils and they're very happy. And it's like, well, if it happens to you, then I feel happy that I can relate things to you. And that trauma in September 2014 had its origins way back in my childhood. Growing up, I grew up in a household where domestic violence was an everyday part of life. My dad was a violent alcoholic and I don't want anybody to think ill of my father. And I can say that because my dad left me bruised, battered and bleeding on occasion. But you know what? I loved him. He was still my dad. The dad that I loved was not the one that was on the alcohol. The dad that I loved was the one who gave me my sense of humour, made me laugh. Yeah, I grew up frightened. Yes, I did. I never knew what mood my father was in. I ended up with a nervous cough because I was so unsettled. I couldn't concentrate. School life was ridiculously difficult because I could not sit down and study at home, not knowing what mood my father was going to be in. Consequently, I hated school. I despised school. I couldn't bring friends around. And it was only this year, back in the summer, a friend of mine who I've known for, get this, 49 years. We've grown up together, Matthew and I. He remembers coming around to my house when I was about eight or nine. He knocked on the door and he said, John, do you want to come out to play today? And I said, no, I can't. Uh, I just don't feel well. So Matthew told me back in the summer, he said, I knew why you couldn't come out that day, John. You had a bruise on your eye. I knew you were holding your chest. You were in pain. And that, I've got to say, after, ooh, what was it, eight or nine, after nearly 44 years, 45 years, unlocked another little memory cage bank and bad memories flooding out that were held in the in whatever part of the brain it is that holds that stuff. And it's unlocked some new nightmares for me. But you know what? I'm not scared of them because I'm empowered because I can confront them and I can say, yeah, I, I understand how in the main, in, in the main, how women feel when they're on one side of a d domestic abuse relationship, it's easy for someone outside to stand there and go, yeah, but we, you just need to leave him. It's not easy. First of all, there is that emotional attachment because I loved my dad. I, I did. In my, in my experience, I loved my dad. But I hated him at the same time. There's a real dichotomy there, one side of the same coin. But domestic violence is another case entirely, but there's often psychological abuse there as well. Some people would regard what my father did with psychological abuse because of the power he had over my mum and I. But my dad never touched my sister, which is a good thing. But when I turned age 13, after one particularly vicious beating in which my dad threw a sewing machine at my mum, one of those big metal ones, and it hit mum, my sister came to get me at my friend Matthews. And she said, John, can you come home, please? Um, Dad's really lost it. Um, so I left Matthews. I walked in the front door. Dad was shouting at mum. Mum was on the floor with the machine on top of her blood pouring from everything. And I just said to Joe, go upstairs. Now. The boundary for me had been crossed. This is all memories that have been unlocked recently. Again, I seem to go for a knife in the kitchen. I ran to the kitchen, picked up a knife and held it up my dad's throat. I can't remember if it was point first or blade first, but I'd had it at his throat. And I said to him, if you touch mum or me again, I will kill you. I had enough. And dad just burst into tears. I think he'd realised all along he just didn't have the control. So that day, mum and dad decided to split up, 
call it a day. Um, because in their words, both of their words, they didn't want me going to prison. Because I would have. I would have done that. Um, and about three or four years later, my dad killed himself in 1986. He was found in a room um, on his own after taking an overdose of drinking drugs. And that hit me hard. People might say, why did it hit you hard? Your dad was a bastard to you. Well, at times he was, yeah. Um, but I wore it as a millstone around my neck for the best part of 40 years. I blamed myself. I blamed me getting aggressive with a knife. And people can tell you it's not your fault. It's not, it's not anything to do with you. Well, in a way it is. Don't tell me it's not my fault. I need that to come from within me. I need to be empowered to say, no, it wasn't my fault. And in 2016, two years after my own attempted suicide, I found it in me to go, I forgive you, Dad. And I can honestly say that is one of the most empowering things and difficult things I've ever had to do. But I felt better for it. I felt better for being able to let go. And 2014, I became a different person. 2016, I evolved again into this person that I am today. Um, but it all stems from our childhood. And the psychiatrist I was speaking to when she first originally diagnosed me in 2002, um, on that Friday that my friend Paul spent three hours on the phone, just after, just before speaking to him, I was at an appointment with her and she wanted to section me. So I think all things come to a head and I thought it's very difficult to explain my memories of it all, my recollections, but I do know one thing. I am such an empowered individual now. And would I go through it all again to be able to, to sit where I am talking to you right now, doing what I do for a living, being the person I am in a heartbeat, hmm. in a heartbeat, I would go through all that again to be sitting here where I am now. And all throughout my life, music has played a huge part in escaping that domestic violence, becoming, getting away to different worlds. Um, I did try playing drums for a while. I did try playing guitar for a while, but I've never, never had the fingers for it. So I've got bananas for fingers. Um, but drums I was pretty good at. Um, but music, listening to music became a huge part and it does impact to this day. It either leads my mood or I will follow up my mood and choose a different music, a different song to reflect the mood I'm in. Mm. And that's for me, in a nutshell, is the power of music. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll go into that. Um, I just want to touch on a couple of things. Uh, as you were explaining that that story, I, I thought of a uh, a phrase that I, I've heard on several occasions before um, in relation to your dad, which is, you know, hurt people hurt people. So if you're feeling hurt, then, of, you know, if we're feeling hurt, often we will lash out or we will not... Uh, be as good to other people, you know, as, as we would be if we weren't hurt. A lot of people who feel emotionally hurt go to things like alcohol or drugs, etc. You know, they haven't got enough self-love themselves. I'm not trying to say that that was the case of your dad or anything like that. But, you know, it, it just, just sprung to mind there because within these interviews, if I can, um, you know, give a couple of other 
uh, bits of my knowledge of things that I've picked up on, you know, then, then I'll do so as well. But you said about forgiveness and forgiveness is so powerful. I think we really need to forgive ourselves for all the mistakes we've done. And, and again, I'm sure that's been a big part of your journey, actually forgiving yourself for, you know, what, what you attempted to do, forgiving other people as, as well. Um, so, yeah, it's so important. So let's talk a little bit about music because, yeah, what you said, you know, I've heard other people um, with similar stories of you know uh, d domestic violence um where maybe they've been children and it, it music has been like you sort of alluded to their way of coping where they could just run upstairs get away from the scene that was going on downstairs just you know put some earphones on and, and escape into music was it was it pretty much like that for you pretty much yeah um i had two forms of escapism one was music, one was literature, um, either reading books or, more importantly for me, my Marvel comics. I, I like to believe I could be a superhero with a superpower and help the world, listening to the row downstairs, and then, yeah, I'd become, I'd go in and I'd be able to help mum, you know? Um, and music would empower me as well. It would... One of my favourite bands is a band called Magnum. And I'll never forget, in 19... I think it was 78, 79? They released an album called Chase the Dragon. And nothing to do with drugs, by the way. But the front cover is of these lizards looking at this spired glass towers through woods. Real fantasy stuff. It's a pink and blue cover. And the first song on that album, Soldier of the Line... I can sing it word for word right now. I love it. It's the story of a young man who goes off to fight with his, gets mortally wounded. And one of the lines there is, you're bleeding deep inside, nobody cares. It's cloudy and you turn your head away. What's that rolling down your face? Are you okay? Hold back those tears from your eyes. Don't show those feelings inside. You're in a murderous playground. And that song is about a young man going to war and ending up dead on the field with the crows pecking out, you know, they're feeding on the dead. It is such a powerful song. And the fact that it was fantasy, I was very much into fantasy as a kid. I still am now. But because it can transport you into the... Magnum transported me into their world and they still do it to this day you know what are we now 40 odd years on they are still making records that transport you into a different world hmm, that's amazing so you're really connected to the lyrics and that's what people say about music and obviously you know i can relate and, and that's what i've yeah. sort of attempted to do with, with empowerment songs you know get certain people get get the message out there and it's not going to be relevant to everyone but, you know, if the song has got a message, people are going to relate to it. People are going to connect to it, aren't they? And I think the thing about music is it's not just the words. It's the fact that it's it's the music behind the words as well, isn't it? You know, in terms of the actual melody or the rhythm or the instruments, you know, whatever it is, it's the combination of the actual lyrics with that that melody that creates that overall experience that can obviously yeah change our state and uh, yeah you know absolutely amazing. I know another band that you love is is the the Disturbed and would you like to sort of explain a bit as as to why I mean a you again you like the music because probably I'm imagining again if their lyrics were totally different or if their message was totally different I'd imagine you, you'd still like the music yeah. but it's even more important for you as well isn't it Would you like to sort of um, shed some light on that yeah the band are very much into promoting mental health they're called disturbed for a reason um they've got songs like down with the sickness um and it's promoting mental health awareness and one of those songs uh, reason to fight it's a recent song that they've issued it is quite simply the single most powerful song I have ever experienced. And I use the word experience to because it's not just I've not just heard it. I've experienced it. 
there is a, an official live recording on YouTube of them singing this song at a concert. And they're talking to members of the audience about mental health, about not being afraid to come forward. And Dave Draymond, the singer, at the beginning of the song, he announces there is a plague in this world that we're all affected by, the demons of addiction and depression. And he's sick and tired of hearing about people taking their own lives. Chris Cornell, Keith Flynn, Chester Bennington, the list goes on. And that song in particular really moves me. And there's another song written by Chester Bennington called One More Light. Lincoln Park's last album, to me, it's a suicide note from Chester Bennington. It's another song on there called I'm Sorry. I'm Sorry for Now. I Could Not Be Around. Listen to the song. Listen to the lyrics. But, and this song, One More Light, is on that album. And he wrote it as a dedication to Chris Cornell. Now, less in just a few months after they he wrote and released that song, Chester took his own life. It's and disturbed have picked up that baton and said, "We are sick and tired of people killing themselves." And on that official video, there's women, there's men. They're all talking about their addictions and they're fighting the demons and each day is a battle. Yes, each day is a battle. For me, it's a battle. I've had days recently when I confided in you that just before this meeting, the mask is on. And you knew it. And I felt happier knowing that one person knew about that. And it helped me get through that meeting. I promise you, it absolutely helped me, James. And for that, I can want to say here and now, thank you. Just knowing that there's someone who gets it, who knows, who understands, and says, yeah, John, it's fine. And that helps, that empowers you to cope with that daily battle of, you've got to be okay. Now, I've recently taken myself off my antidepressants and at the moment I feel absolutely brilliant. Yes, I have my good days and bad days, but in my mind, I want to experience those good days and bad days. I was very much, when I was on the medication, I was very much a flat line. My emotions were very flat lined. Yeah, I'd dip, I'd, I'd laugh and cry, but it wasn't as natural as it is now. The medication helped me cope with a dark time about 18 months ago when I was stabbed in the back by someone I trusted and lost nearly £10,000 out of my business. But the medication really helped me overcome that, as did some therapy. But what I want to say is, I want to be me. I want to be, experience the sadness, experience the happiness, and experience the mediocrity without being on medication. Um, I feel far more in control. Music helps me and control my emotions. And knowing that there are people out there, like yourself, who get it, and I can pick up the phone and go, can we have a chat? That helps a lot. Mm. That is where people like you are my medication. That helps me immensely. And that, that gives you the power, that empowers you to know, yeah, it's okay to not be okay. And if you're not feeling okay, change is there. Drop an email. Mm. Does that make sense? Oh, it makes it, it makes so much sense, and um, I just, just want to thank you. And 
I want to say something to anyone who's watching or listening to this. What John is saying, just have a think. Do you know someone that actually needs to listen to this interview? And this isn't about what, you know, the reasons why I'm creating this series or Inner Anthem or John's business or my business. I'm not saying it for that. I'm just saying you are hearing information from a man who has been there experienced it is still experiencing it is still working through the battles and what he is saying is you know some, there's great if i use the phrase golden nuggets from it you know as in reaching out to people chatting to people okay recognizing that emotions are okay you know high emotions and low emotions that it's normal to have those emotions. We've still got to be able to to cope with it. Um, the fact that, you know, I, I imagine, John, that you are fully aware that you will have future challenges as we all do in our lives. So it's being able to have strategies of, of you know, being prepared for those. That's just a mindset thing, isn't it? Being pre- prepared for future strategy, uh, for future situations where you know something's going to happen, you're going to feel a little bit low, and then it's, you know, what, what can you do about it? Um, so yeah, please, you know, if you are listening or watching this interview, who do you know that actually needs to hear this message? Because I didn't quite know that this interview was, was going to totally go in this direction, but in actual fact, as, as John has already alluded to, sometimes, uh, people need to hear that message at the right time to stop something bad from happening. So I just wanted to sort of say that and I don't feel, you know, bad for saying that whatsoever because um yeah. John, you are it, the interesting thing is as soon as I met you because I've known you how long have I known you? A year or something like that now? Um, about a year, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um John, I met John at a network meeting and for me, you are someone that is an emotional person in various ways. You know, you were someone that I just felt absolute warmth for. You know, it was like you you embracing me like a brother. And you just, I think, got, you know, a little bit of a, an insight of what I did. And, you know, it, it was very, very different to the awkward kind of things that you might have a network meeting. So, Hi, how are you? What's your name? I do this, I do that. You know, it was more like, hi, how are you? You know, I want to speak to you. And you are someone that, that for me, yeah, is very emotional. So I can, I, I've seen some of those, those real, I don't know that it is highs in terms of you might not be feeling great, but you make other people feel great. And that's an important thing. Um, but I, I can imagine that you, you know, you do have those emotions very high and low. So once again, if you are, you know, if, if you are watching this and you can relate to that, well, there's other people like it as well. Um, and, you know, that's okay. And that's part of who you are. Um, John, has music, so how else let, let's talk about music how else has it helped because you've obviously you've used it to escape okay which is good in one way but of course we can't keep running away from things you've obviously related to certain lyrics um how else has it sort of helped you i don't know whether you've got sort of any stories or anything like that but it, it, do, do you sort of feel that it really has pulled you out of, of some of those low times or one million percent um another one of my favorite bands is acdc they're not subtle they're not they've not invented anything new what they do do is give you damn good rock and roll um and rock the blues away by them is another good track and i've played that a couple of times before going into a sales meeting just to lift myself and go, right, come on, we're going to rock the blues away. Come on, we do this. And it's a great tune. It's a great, and when anger starts duck walking, playing the guitar, boom, I'm in heaven. It's another side of, so far, yeah, it's all heavy metal and that way of you, but yeah, I love me rock and metal. I, it, to me, rock and metal music is something that, transcends all genres i do like trance music i like classical i like soul i like reggae i like all branches of music but for me rock music you can play a cappella. you can play with a classical band behind you you can play with just the guitar 
you can play loud and heavy, like Napalm Death, like Wolf Mother, you can play it really loud. You can play it to, in a blues fashion, like Dave Coverdale on White Snake. You can use it to play in a rock and roll bluesy style, like ACDC. You can use it to transform you to different worlds, like Magnum, like Rush. You can, it is one branch of music that can become whatever you want it to be. And yeah, I've used it to pump myself up to go into meetings and go, come on. Yeah, very much so. And like now I'm getting all, I I mean, I would love to be able to play some of this music (laughs) to the people listening to this. I really would because I love sharing my love of music. I absolutely love it. People can certainly check these bands out. We'll also, we'll put the link, because you mentioned about that Disturbed track earlier on. we put the link in the show notes, all right? So have a little check. It'll be a YouTube link, and I'll put the put the uh, link into that. But, um, yeah, I would, I would imagine that most people have probably heard of ACDC. So, um, yeah, that's... Um, um, I've that's only seen them four times. Record. I want to see them again. <laughs> right. <laughs> Brilliant. Let's turn my light has gone off. There we go. One so of my... Another one of my favourite bands is Iron Maiden. I saw, last saw them in 2008 at Twickenham. And there's nothing like going to a, a, a metal concert. There really isn't. The energy, the vibrancy, the emotion, the... Can I use the term brotherhood? Brother and sisterhood? It's just... Ah... Oh, yeah, absolutely, it. absolutely. And that's the thing, you know, that's what that's what I've noticed myself when I've been at live gigs, sometimes in a massive stadium or outdoors, sometimes in, in quite a small, intimate venue. But it just takes you to that other place. And, and there obviously is a connection with everybody else in the room. You know, they're there or, you know, 90 percent of the people are, are there to watch the band and, and, and enjoy that music. You know, some people might have been dragged along, but um, you know they're there so there is that shared experience but yeah you do you just feel yeah in actual fact i think you you get a human connection and and let me use an example i i like my my rock and i might go along to an event and i might look quite different to the majority of people at that event because i haven't got nose rings and i haven't got tattoos and i'm not wearing leather and i might look quite different and if I was just being judgmental, then I could say, oh, I'm not sure about these people. But you absorb in that music and, and you can relate to it. I actually think on a, on a kind of human layer in, in actual fact, where sometimes you get rid of those judgments and you actually just feel kind of the, the spirit or soul of, of somebody else. Would, would you agree? Yeah, one, yeah, absolutely. It is. And again, it comes, like you say, about the rock music, you get... I went to a Stone Sour concert in 2018 at Brixton Academy. I can't go to too many concerts because I suffer with tinnitus. But, um, and there were all types. There were the nose rings, the lip rings and the hoops and whatever. And there were several guys in smart suits. And that's the beauty of music. It transcends people. Um, what I was saying about metal music, it even goes into rap. Look at Linkin Park. Look at Papa Roach, just two bands that new metal that use rap influences. And I hope that music, does it sound trite to say it can be a healing thing? Not at all. Not to me. No. I'm with you, yeah. It, it does. And, and the thing is, the research shows that as well now, you know, um, you know, sound in itself. You know, I've just interviewed a, a sound healer. So sound in itself actually heals. And there's research to show that, you know, and music absolutely can heal on lots of different levels. And some of this could be consciously where you feel better, particularly at that moment. But a lot is, again, subconscious and at a cellular level as well, both both physical side of things and emotional side of things as, as well. So, yeah. It is, and I find when I, cause I do a lot of driving, naturally, mm. but I love being able to either A, listen to the radio. I quite like listening to some of the DJs, actually, just listening to the banter between music or choosing my own music or going on to just... I've got a massive playlist on my phone and it just just going random and not knowing what's coming up next. It could be 
Alexander O'Neill, could be Bob Marley, could be Leonard Skinner, could be Iron Maiden, could be Motorhead, could be uh, Robert Miles, could be, you know, one of the other trance musicians, could be anything, could be Beethoven, could be Gregory Porter. And I love that beauty sometimes when you just think, I don't, I'll let the music decide. Almost like spinning a wheel wherever it lands. Oh, that's actually, yeah, I haven't heard that in a while. I see. And there's a Pete. Sorry, go on, carry on. I was going to say, I think karaoke is a great thing. I can't sing for toffee. But, you know, I feel good when I'm singing. I think I'm, whoever I'm listening to, I think I'm that lead singer at that particular time. I know I'm not, but I feel good when I'm doing it. People around me might wish I'd shut the hell up. Dogs howling, cats screaming, but I feel good. Absolutely. And, 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 you know, that, that's another element of music, of course, isn't it? The actual performing of it can be very much healing as, as well. Uh, you know, one of my favourite bands uh, growing up and, and still a favourite band of, of mine would be The Who. And, you know, Keith Moon, I mean, he needed music. He needed the drums because he, he was just, you know, he, he was just energy i mean he would have been labeled as this that and the other nowadays you know adhd and and everything else you know he needed those drums he needed that music that was yeah. his way of expressing things and then of course he did extra things as well and, and started um you know putting gunpowder in them and blowing them up and, and everything like that as well but you know that was his and, and it is the case for so many musicians it's it's a it's a release and as a songwriter you know i very much i mean i First of all, you know, I've been on stage, I've been in a band. So again, absolutely, you know, it's exhilarating when the spotlight's on you, when you're on stage, you know, you've got people watching you, uh, you're singing your songs. It is absolutely incredible. So there's that side of it. But also as a songwriter, uh, again, you know, you've you've so, sort of all, already mentioned about lyrics of songs. You know, I've used songs in the past to write about the challenges that I've had, the low points in my life. I've done that, you know, I've, I've written about lost love and, and, and all of those sort of things. But more recently, I've obviously written because I've got into personal development and got into this whole empowerment theme and I've written those in, empowerment songs albums. But again, that comes from me. It's, it's a way of me expressing myself. And when I do that and I put some of those lyrics down in a way a, it's healing. It does heal me. It does. And B, it actually adds, in a way, some accountability. Because if I'm writing about things like overcoming your self-doubts, about, you know, becoming empowered and, and, you know, breaking away from your demons, whatever it is. Well, if I'm writing that and putting it out in the world, I've, I've, got, to, I've got to follow up with that, haven't I? You know, so it, it actually helps me on so many levels as well. And I know you, you were very kind earlier on, just before this conversation, sort of saying about um, your thoughts on the Empowerment Songs albums. Um, so just wondered if, if you'd be happy to sort of share you know, um, what you think of this whole concept of empowerment songs? I think it's long overdue. I think it seems people have said to me that my idea for um, community driving school was simple and they're surprised no one had come up with it before. The same could be said of what you've written. It's so simple, but yet no one's written about it before. No one's done it in the way you have. So you're blazing a trail. And for me, Shine a Light is really good. And Best Version of Me, again, another. The, just, the titles just say it all. The Best Version of Me. I believe I'm the best version of me right now sitting here with you. No, and I, I've got to get these on CD because getting the play, getting them to play through my phone in the car is really awkward. But <laughs> um, I really do. I've got to get the CD because um, th th there's songs that when you, if you if you like me and you like sitting down in a darkened room, incense burning, and just shut everything else out and listen to the music. These songs really do take you on a journey. 
I would say this is your yellow brick road, James. That's how I'm not blowing smoke. I'm not bolstering your ego, but I do believe your journey, your yellow brick road is on these three albums. And it's great to be able to walk alongside you on that road and go, yeah, I know what you mean. I know how you feel. You know, I'm, I'm sharing your emotions, your words, your lyrics, your music. I'm sharing it and going, yeah, yeah, I get that. And I can see where it's coming from. And it is so simple. Why hasn't anyone else done it before? Mm. So you, to me, are everything. Oh, no, that's a song that's done right. But you, to me, are a trailblazer in what you're doing and what you've written. And you've bared your soul. I mean, welcome to the real me. That is a real opening your soul, standing in front of people naked kind of thing. That's, yeah, this is me. I'm not, I've not got a shirt. And this is me. This is how I am. This is who I am. So, yeah, I, I'm proud to say I know you. I'm proud to say I know the songs. I'm proud to say they do work. We've, between us, we've used the word empowerment a lot. And it is true. Empowerment is the act of being empowered by something. And the trigger in a lot of instances is music and songs and what you've written here are empowering. That's the trigger. Thank you so much. I really appreciate I'm not, that. I just want to put this out. James isn't paying me for this. <laughs> not an ad. This is bloody judge for yourself. Get out and listen to them. I urge anyone, go and bloody listen to them. Tell me you're not affected by them. And I will call you a liar if you're not. I mean that. I'm not just saying it. Because James is is... James is a friend to me. James is a confidant to me. I'm not just saying it because of all of that. I think I'd be brave enough to tell him, James, it's a bit, a bit trite. It's not. It truly isn't. And all I can say is do yourself a favour. If you don't want to buy all three, don't. Buy one. Get yourself into that music. Get yourself into the lyrics. Lose yourself. Turn the light off. Put the incense on. Whatever you want to do. Immerse yourself into the songs. They work. They they empower you. They do what they're there to do. They empower you. And if they don't, you're not human. Wow. Here end of the lesson. Thank you so much. I should have got you to do the sales video. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you ever so much. I really appreciate that. And yeah, you know, again, this interview is, is about you and, uh, and not me. But yeah, something, you know, some of those songs you mentioned, I, I'm just going to take this opportunity again to just put a point out there. So the best version of me, I will say this, OK, and, and I'm going to say this to you, John, and, I, and you know, I hope I hope people don't sort of think this is too cheesy or anything like that. But if you do get over it, OK, and John, you, you've had those challenges. All right. But you are the best version of you in this whole universe. No one can do you better than you. That is what that song is about. And once you start to accept that, which, you know, maybe around 2014, you weren't doing so much, you know, but once you start to accept that, that again is, is, is empowering. And welcome to the real me. Uh, once again, it was, it, it's me literally sort of, you know, laying my soul bare um and and really if you look at it the difference between the verses and the chorus is the verses are all about i've got this thing that i want to do you know i know there's more to me and the chorus is about here i am i've arrived i'm here now and it's not an ego based thing it's a soul based thing it's it's about yeah. you know because i because what do is we put up a load of resistance in our minds don't we um we 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 have that resistance that little voice that tells us we're not good enough and we don't deserve this and don't deserve that i'm sure you've had it lows john because of your earlier childhood experiences you would have blamed yourself you know all of that sort of stuff okay but once we can get rid of that we you know our true selves our real selves the real me you know we, we are amazing individuals and i want to use that to lead on to what you are involved in now because 
if I just said, oh, this is John, he's a driving instructor. That's not what you do, John, is it? You use that as a tool, but you have a mission. And I think your mission is fueled by your experiences that you have had yourself. And you are on a mission to change lives and you are doing it one person at a time. You use driving, instructing to, as a tool to do that, but there's so much more to it. So, so please give us an overview of yeah what your mission is, what community driving school is all about, and we'll also get on to you know we we'll make sure we share, share some links and also get on to how people can support you as well. The if I was to take a mission statement community driving school it's uh what's in the name it's by the community for the community what do i mean by that it relies on the community support to help out those less fortunate individuals in their community to become positive contributors how do they do that the people who are selected to come on these courses have to volunteer within their community whether it's litter picking, whether it's going back to education, whether it's helping someone vulnerable in their community, we partner up with charities to help monitor that. Um, and in return, we give them an hour's driving lesson for each hour they volunteer. But it's funded by individuals and businesses within the community to allow us to do it. And we have got some serious success stories. Um, if I may touch on pupil A, he was the very first sponsored pupil that we picked up from Kent County Council. He, when I pitched for funding, I said to them, give me your toughest individual, the person you cannot reach, the person that you, the social worker is struggling to get through to, the person who you think is in most danger of going off the rails. So they presented me with pupil A. He wasn't engaging with the social worker, he wasn't turning up for meetings. Two years on, He's employed, he's got his driving license, he's about to become a dad and he's escaped a life of dealing drugs. He's working at an animal sanctuary. So does it work? Yeah. Is it a quick fix? No. Is it transforming lives for the better? Yes. Very much yes. Does it bring communities together? Yes. Does it make people better? Yes. And in a selfish way, it's therapy for me. Giving these people opportunities. We're, I've recently partnered with a domestic abuse charity called Joining Hands, Joining Hearts. And Kiwi runs it's a victim of domestic and sexual abuse from a child right through her adulthood. And she's quite inspiring for me, this woman. She really is. She admits to not being able to write her own name until she was 10. She wasn't schooled properly. But she said, people like us are survivors. Sometimes you've got to be knocked down to get up again. And those words ring very true. And community driving school is going to help victims of domestic abuse become independent. My long-term aim is to secure funding so that we can teach one of her, I don't know using the term clients, people, someone from a domestic abuse background to become a driving instructor and a franchise holder for community driving school, empowering her to become who she's meant to be, to have her own little business, to work when she wants to work, to help others and to be part of a community. And that is, is what Community Driving School does. In return for all of this, what we do is, it is, you're right, it's more than just driving. I can relate to people on a certain level. 
when I, I've had a 17 year old sit next to me, you met her, she's 19 now, but you met her at the event we went to, Grace. If you looked at her arms and legs, you'd see the slice marks from head, from wrist to shoulder. There's not an area on her arm that doesn't have a knife mark where she's cut herself. She has become the best version of her since becoming on this course. It's been tough for her at times. She's had down moments when for months she's not been able to get a lesson because she's not been in the right place. I just simply have been overwhelmed. Um, but we're close to getting her through to passing her driving test. That is what we do. And we can back that up with maths and English training if they need it. We can back that up with CV writing if they need it. We can back it up with confidence building if they need it. There is so much more to what we do than, as you just quite rightly described it, it's so much more than just being a driving instructor. And we are expanding, not just my waistline, but we've got someone in Maidstone who's going to be taking a franchise of this out to there. I'm working with someone in Ramsgate and in Ashford who's going to take a franchise of this out there once they've trained. But all the instructors have got one thing in common. They've been broken and come back together. And they're the people that I want to be instructors for CBS. Because that way you can relate to some of the most vulnerable people in our communities. You can relate to them on a level that nobody else can. We've all got stories to tell. I've met people that make my story look like fairyland, looks like a complete walk in the park. My father was physically abusive to me, but he never sexually abused me. I've worked with someone who has, whose father did that, whose uncle did that, whose grandparents did that to a 13, their 13 year old granddaughter. So whilst I can relate to them on a certain level, they appreciate it. I can't relate to their exact story, particularly you know, being sexually abused by your grandparents when they're supposed to look after you. Um, but it goes on out there in this fucking world, in this world of ours. Sorry, my language. Oh, edit, edit, edit. Um, it goes on in this world of ours. And the more I get into this sector, into the charity and social enterprise sector, the more I see it. Someone we both know, Ali Hollins, she met one of my pupils. She met Taylor. She spent about four or five hours with us on a lesson and Taylor took us out for a drive. Taylor is one of those people who has become empowered. She is... It's a shame she couldn't be there on the 1st of March. She wasn't in the right place to be there, but she is absolutely the face, the voice of what community driving school can achieve for someone. Look at her video on my YouTube channel. You can see she's been broken. Let's put that in the show notes as well. Yeah, let's put the link to that in the uh, show notes as well. Yeah. You can yeah, see absolutely. how broken she was. Yeah. And then in another video, she talks about how she, she hasn't yet passed, but she's going to talk about how she is. She will, because she knows she can. Not my words, hers. And that's empowering her through driving. Yeah. And it comes back to the theme of what you do, James. Empowering. Giving people the tools to say, yes, I can. I can be the best version of me. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and so therefore, really, it isn't about what you do it isn't about the job it's about why you do it isn't it you know like i say you are on a mission okay it doesn't matter you know what it is you're doing but if you've got that that passion and that mission and that purpose behind you then you know really there's there's no stopping you um and and you have certainly got that so yeah any any video that, that we want to put or you know any uh, have a have a check down down below in the show notes there'll be um the community driving school uh, website please do have a check um out you know find out more about uh, about community driving school and what john's doing um and obviously if you can help help but you know 
this is just going to get bigger. It's an amazing idea. Um, it's going to get bigger. And like I say, it is fueled. Uh, if you can um, sort of excuse the pun in a way, but it is certainly fueled by that, you know, that passion and that purpose and that mission. So, well, John, I, I could speak to you for hours, um, but um, yeah, we're, we're going to say goodbye now. It has been an absolute honour and a pleasure. Thank you for being so vulnerable, so honest. Um, you know, th this interview in itself, in theory, could help so many people. So I just want to um, thank you. I'm, I'm so glad to have, uh, have met you you and um yeah that's it just just keep doing what you're doing and you james keep giving us those songs and i do hope that you've got a follow-up to these because there is there are so many amazing people out there and all they need is that one trigger and if that one trigger is me or it's one of your songs we need them we need you to keep going as well you are as much fuel for what people like me do as anything else and I can only say thank you and from my perspective thank you for what you did at my event on the 1st of March that meant a lot to me because you didn't know me that well and I want to put it out there that James trusted me to come to my event and stand up in front of a room full of people that he didn't know to talk about the power of music sorry I'm doing my inner Donald Trump there <laughs> um but you did that, and I want to say thank you because you've got a room full of people to recognise the power of music. And when the young lady, Olivia, sang those songs, that room was enthralled, and I could see the power of music in action. So thank you, James. It's by us coming together, we, we can become stronger. And for me, collaboration is everything. Mm. Absolutely. I can't do it without the community. The community doesn't better without benefit without what I do. It's collaboration, it's community, it's working together. And it's, I know, I may, don't want to jump the gun, but I hope we've got some ideas burning between us for some things that could be coming along in the line in, in the not too distant future. Absolutely. There we go. Well, there's some more golden nuggets for you. That's what it's about working together with like minded people who share, you know, who, who are in alignment with you and, and share similar values. So brilliant. Thank you ever so much, John. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. Three quick things to do now. One, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Two, go to the inneranthem.com website and access your free video series, The Three Minute Music Life Hack, so you can find out how to use music to enhance your life. And thirdly, get access, get your own copy of the Empowerment Songs albums at the inneranthem.com website.